tick-tock, tick-tock. Tick-tock, tick-tock. I said start the show. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah, really. I know. F in YouTube. Come on. It's just so exciting. Always. All Always right. Ladies, do you want to? Hey, <laughs> <can you>, like, <laughs> lady. Come on, lady. <laughs> We're all ladies here. Yeah, well, exactly. At Ben's the lady a, land. Ben's a grand lady. He's the grandest lady of all of us. I am this. the old lady today. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise, Veronica Ciccone. Hello, everyone. It is, oh, wait, did I say everyone? I meant everybody. It's Liberty. How you doing tonight? Mm, we be doing good, Miss Liberty. Mm-hmm. Yo. Be looking good. It's just be, it, ooh, okay. Listen, y'all, it's just been hot. It's been, it's hot. It's been hot. It's going to be hot. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> and hey, everybody. It's Stefan. Yes, indeed. It, it has been burning up lately. Uh, welcome to MLVC. Your counter-programming to tonight's U.S. presidential debate, where our country's democracy is literally crumbling in front of our eyes. Uh, though we probably should be watching tonight's debate between Biden and Dump, duke it out on national television, Ben's nerves could not handle it. So we decided to have a little Madonna chat during the time slot instead and watch the debate highlights after the fact. That's right, gentlemen. I'll remind you that you each have two minutes to expound upon your particular point, and you will allow your opponent to make his particular viewpoint known, and um, at which point you will have 30 seconds to rebuttal. Just your, your microphone, lady your microphone gets cut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Just like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Um, I had unintentionally scheduled this live to happen at this time. And then Ben mentioned to me, he's like, oh, are we, we're doing this during the debate. And I was like, oh, crap. But we, we decided to keep on going. We're not even going to check and see how many people are watching because I'm sure everyone's watching the debate, but it's okay. You'll, you'll be able to watch this after the fact, you know, and uh, hopefully we still have, we still have a country. I don't know. I feel like a lot of us are just sort of, I don't know if over all of it is the right word, but we're burnt. We're all burnt out. And I don't, I already. Yeah. I couldn't. Oh, we're I just, under it. Yeah. And uh, I, I won't talk much about how I'm feeling about the whole situation, but I'll just say that I would watch the highlights, but to watch the entire thing, I don't have the patience, the wherewithal. Yeah. Well, I'm, I don't have the time to go out and get blood pressure medicine tonight. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I, seriously. Yeah. It's um, not good for us. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, we could all pop a, you know, uh, an Austin gummy and uh, and we'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Oh, then you're buying cheap t-shirts in the parking lot that like bleed <laughs> onto your other clothes in a cold wash. Don't yeah. even get it started. <laughs> Hey, don't knock those parking lot t-shirts. We love a good parking lot t-shirt. That's right. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you you too. I, I hope everyone is keeping as cool as possible because um, the climate change that uh, one of the tonight's debaters is going to deny is happening in real life has been wreaking havoc all over the country. I know it's been burning up in Philadelphia and I've seen record temperatures happening in Texas. So Liberty, thank you for joining us from your bunker underground. (laughs) I wish I'm actually in the second floor. It's all, listen, it's already hot for me just in general as a a woman of a certain age, if you will. (laughs) Um, I experience warmer than normal temperatures just being alive. And yeah, it's right about a hundred all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I, up, mm-hmm. I actually went out in jeans today. I don't know what I was thinking this morning. I look so cute. And uh, it's because <laughs> this new size fit me and I was very excited about oh, it. Um, but yeah, fun. so yeah, no, quickly reverted to shorts because yeah. 
I had a fever, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to get to the big topic uh, uh, a little later on in the episode, but, you know, there there is plenty of goings on in the Madonna-verse. Oh, yes. She's a stewing and a brewing. What's she got cooking? Oh, no. Um, oh, that was your cue. Right. That was your cue, Liberty. Oh, yeah, sorry. I should have written that down. <laughs> it's so hot here. I have... <laughs> Her brain melted. <laughs> it's because Madonna took me there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's right. Uh, Don't just stand there. Let's get to it. It's time for a little. This week in Chaconi. See, I get what I want. Our, our first item on the docket is according to Pole Star's mid year report, Madonna scores the highest grossing tour of 2024 so far uh, with average ticket prices of $208. And I was like, what average <laughs> ticket price are you looking at? Because my ticket was certainly not that cheap. Uh, the pop icon had an average gross of 2,794,000 with 13,378 average tickets sold, making for a total of 856 plus thousand in ticket sales. Across 34 reported shows out of 65 dates. Obviously, they were only looking at the dates from this year, not in total. But, um, yeah, I mean, I thought that was a no-brainer that Madonna was sort of the the top grossing. Mostly because her, her tickets are so expensive. Right. It, well, yeah. and yeah, with that average price point, I'm not, that seems crazy. I guess I just paid all of the higher prices, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And I I don't know if I I was surprised, but not because I didn't think that she would. I just thought that other uh, artists would have. Taylor. Yeah. Well, so I think according to the article, I don't know if they mentioned it in the article, if it's just something else that somebody else had mentioned. I don't believe Taylor Swift has reported her earnings for this year as of yet. I think that was Billboard said they haven't. Uh, they haven't. She her tour is not going to report sales figures until the very end. That's like after like October or something, right? She still has. Oh, shows. I thought it was in twenty twenty six. Oh, is it that? No, I, I think no, it's. I, no, I think she said I, she was ending in December. Yeah, I was being snide because I'm oh. just like it's it's like the share tour. It's like uh, is it <laughs> over? How many times is she going to go back out? Like. Don't Listen, come for us, Swifties. <laughs> Taylor <laughs> not, knows. Not to this show. <laughs> she could go on and on every oh. neck, all the eras for the rest of eternity, and she would still have, she would still be pulling the numbers. So good uh, yeah. for her. Although Chapel Roan is probably going to. So uh, I was going to I was going to mention that. So uh, my God bless my goddaughter. She's a lovely woman, young, young woman. And she had wished me happy birthday God bless her. And she, I, I asked her, I said, so uh, how, what, what are you, what are you listening to these days? Cause I'm always interested to know, like, what are the young kids listening to? And I was like, what are you listening to? Is it still Taylor Swift? No, I'm listening to Chapel Roan. And I was like, I have no idea who that is. So after I got off the phone with her, I queue up Chapel Roan and I was like, oh, uh, okay. I, I, I'm kind of on board with this. And I sent I messaged both of you and I said, y'all have to listen to Chapel Roan because I think she'd be inspiring or something different and interesting. Ben had already been on board. He was like, yeah, I'm down with it. Liberty, I was, she was getting inspired. And so, yeah, I wondered if that was sort of like a turning point on Taylor, if where it's like suddenly now, because obviously everyone, they, they had, they have to hit a peak and then it goes downhill because somebody knew or it's like they've sort of just worn out their welcome. So I wonder if maybe that's why Taylor's calling it quits now. It's like quit while you're ahead. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like Chapel's just got a different vibe. But, I mean, I listen to her all day today and the talent is, I mean, I have to say, like, I'm almost... I like her better than, like, Billie Eilish or, you know, mm. as far as talent. I mean, it's a little different, but... That there's like I guess what two records Chapel has or yeah, yeah um, she's relatively new I mean she's yeah. second record is much more my like speed first one is a little bit m- slower so mm. I, I was really loving this uh, Pink Pony Club but I'm, you can sort of see a lot of pop references in what Chapel Roan is doing because she's sort of 
sort of covers the gamut of everything. Like I heard there's definitely influences of Madonna, even if it's not overt, you know, I mean, I think Madonna sort of is in all of the current pop world, you know, with what's happening with Charlie XCX. And I think with, um, with what's happening in uh, Tove Lo and I'm sorry, it's not Tove Lo. It's like Tove Lo or something. Tove Lo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just say Tove Lo. Uh, but I you know, like all of those, I think there's sort of like, they're like the electro side of it. And I think Chapel Roan is sort of a little bit more like Kate Bush uh, slash Billie Eilish. There's an alt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, see, I think it's straight up pop music, but she's it a is. pop girly who like, could compete on RuPaul's Drag Race, right? So it's got, it's edgy in the way that Gaga was fashion edgy, but it's, but Gaga came out before Drag Race. Cause like, yeah. And it's so influenced by all that. Like some of the designers design, some of her designers design for famous drag queens and like the makeup and Mm -hmm. everything. You're like, oh, you could be like Gottmik on RuPaul like Mm -hmm. it's just like oh okay and and that's the big pivot from Taylor right like Taylor was very much that mid-millennium millennial millennial, like folk pop thing that was popular and she's sort of just like Madonna and Beyonce did yeah they grew and it's time for the the turn the corner of the culture yeah Mm -hmm. I say Tyler has, I mean, Tyler, Taylor has a huge, like a, a like a large age appeal. Yeah. So she can yeah. appeal to 50 year old ladies and also teens and, and little girls uh, or boys or whoever, you know, wants to listen to Taylor. I would say Chapel is a little bit more niche, a little bit more artsy. I find her work highly referential, especially, mm. of, yeah, the drag queen world and and a little bit Madonna. There's something there that's granular. Um, and, you know, and when I look at, let's say, for example, the two moment people right now would be like Chapel Roan and, and Sabrina Carpenter, even mm-hmm. though, you know, Sabrina uh, and her sort of are two different. But if you're more artsy, you're definitely going to lean Chapel. Whereas if you're more poppy, you're going to lean um, more Sabrina. Yeah. Uh, and I like both, you know, mm-hmm. kind of. There's a time and place for all of them. Well, and, sure. and FYI for everyone, don't come for us in the comments right now. I know you're going to be like, this is a Madonna podcast. Why are they saying Nobody said about a word. Chapel Roan. It's like, well, this is what happens when Madonna doesn't release new music. We don't, we, we, have, to, <laughs> we have to go and listen to Spotify artists that we normally wouldn't listen to because Madonna hasn't been dishing us out anything. So yeah. that's, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and again, all of these people are all, they all are influenced and they're, and doing what they can do because of Madonna. So at the end of the day, when we talk about new artists, it doesn't necessarily negate whatever Madonna is or who Madonna uh, has become. She is part of who they, and who these young people end up becoming or or referring. Or or aspire to be. I mean, they, they would, they should be praying that they have a modicum of the success that Madonna has. I honestly, I don't know if pop artists today could even hope to have anywhere close to half the longevity that someone like Madonna has. The yeah. the superstardom of that just, I don't think that exists as an ability anymore. Like that's why you're constantly seeing stars like, all of a sudden they're on the voice, you know, hosting the voice. They're they're hosting a daytime talk show. They're because the music industry doesn't support them. I mean, I, that awful news I just heard yesterday that all of MTV, oh, the MTV news, news the archive, MTV news archives horrible. have been completely wiped from the MTV website. And I was like, it's like 20 years of MTV news archived footage just gone now it still exists somewhere on like the the hidden internet but uh, like uh, there's the labels and the publishers both the book publishers and the music labels and the movie studios are actually all suing the wayback machine and the internet archive to try to get all of those index pages 
removed permanently. You know why? Because they want to be able to train the AI on that stuff and not have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's such a hot mess right now. Well, but I mean, what, what angers me is that it's like, that's historical documents. Like, MTV News was was doing music stories and interviews and yeah. deep dives on on all things popular culture for so long that other news outlets were not doing. And to, like, remove just remove that, it's, I mean, it's literally, like it's like suppressing information that yeah. we should have access to. It's just wrong. It's not right. I don't like, well, and nothing has taken its place, right? Like in the place of things like their news division, like that, all you, and even the old tabloid shows. I mean, think about how you used to get your access to Madonna on entertainment tonight. Right. And, right. And st- and MTV news, and as those things disappear, all that's replaced it for future audiences and future artists is TMZ. Like, right. Well, from a it, from it, a from a national perspective, I mean, I think the reason why they've been so easily replaced is because publicists and PR firms and marketing and you know agencies think of oh well, as with Madonna why bother trying to pitch a story to entertainment tonight when we've got our own platform with however many millions of followers we have, we'll just put it out on a reel and, but, and get, right, get traction but, that way. But that's short sighted because they don't own anything. They put on all that social media stuff. Even the famous people, if they read their terms of service, they don't own that content. Yeah. Well, so, and, and they're not doing the content in the way that those news outlets used to like absolutely M- MTV yeah. news gave us how many behind the scenes looks at Madonna you know, with the bedtime story video, the, like the, it was just, we got so much programming out of it. It was thoughtful. It was curated. It was, it was scripted. There was interviews attached to it. There was behind the scene moments. Like it were not for MTV news. We would have never gotten those beautiful moments while she was making the Ray of light album. We would have never gotten that take a bow video special where he, Kurt Loder was sitting down with her and just talking to her while they were in Spain. Like there were so many great things about what MTV news did that you're right. Has, ha, have not been, repl- have not been replaced. I mean, I, Again, I'll say I've said it before. I will say it till, till the, the last time this podcast airs an episode. But like, that's the beauty of what I feel like we should be doing. You're like Madonna's team should hire us, and we will do all those specials for her. And you know, like, I mean, she won't talk to us, but uh, you know, well, Madonna, well, as she's <laughs> as she's parading by, we'll just, here to comment, Madonna. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> That's it, folks. That was Madonna. Yeah. Live live from uh, Austin, Texas. Here we are in MLVC. Yeah. Madonna had nothing to say to us tonight, but that's okay. We'll be back again tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't but, even. Uh, oh, go ahead, Liberty. I was just going to say, I don't even pretend to understand, like, the impact, you know, what that could mean in the future as far as, um, like, obviously MTV isn't what it was for yeah. anyway, but, um, RIP MTV. Yeah. Oh, I saw, I saw yeah. somebody like somebody had posted something about like MTV, uh, celebrating 40 years. Uh, uh, it's like a 40th anniversary or 40, 45th anniversary of playing 19 years of music. <laughs> like, I was like, well, yeah, it's like, you know, it ain't what yeah, the old gray, the old gray mare just ain't what she used to be, but it's because well, of money. And then you just, know, we all know that. Yeah, it's, they're it's trying money to thing. save money because it, it is expensive to keep all that video footage up on the servers and keep them running. And yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, well, speaking of celebration tour, so I wanted to have a couple moments. So celebration tour until last night had been the most recent concert I have seen. However, last night I went and saw Janet Jackson's Together Again tour in Philadelphia. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between the two. And I don't, I'm not trying to compare, contrast like Madonna to Janet, but I, and I don't know if either of you have seen any concerts since you've seen, I think at Liberty you have, but Ben, I don't know if you have, since you've seen Madonna's tour. Not like that kind of concert, no. But I was, I, just from uh, like production value alone, I was a little shocked at how spoiled Madonna has made us. Now I love Janet Jackson and I've seen Janet Jackson many, many times. I saw rhythm nation 
I saw Janet multiple times. I saw Velvet Rope Tour. Uh, I've seen the State of the World. I've seen, you know, like I went and saw her in the um, Central Park uh, annual, what is it? The, oh, what's that festival? I'm blanking. It's the uh, Global Citizens Festival. Thank you, Brain, for working. Uh, it's been a long week at work, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm surprised I have anything left at this point. <laughs> uh, anyway, point is, I've seen Janet Jackson multiple times. I love Janet. Uh, I always have been a supporter of Janet, but it was just so fascinating to me just walking in the venue to to about to head down to the floor seats. And I was like, oh, my God, where is the stage? Like the stage was so tiny, so small. It was basically the size of Madonna's cake stage where she did nothing really matters. That was that was sort of Janet's entire stage. Um, the number of dancers, she only had four, four little backup dancers. She did have a live band which I thought was fascinating. You could see them on the stage and she gave them attention. Um, and very much like what Madonna is, was doing with celebration, Janet, who has not had an album in like eight years at this point. Um, and although has said that new music is coming, we still haven't seen it. Uh, this is the second tour in as many years that Janet's just doing quote unquote greatest hits, even though she's not technically calling it a greatest hits tour, but you know, for the last eight years, all she's been touring has been her old music. So very similar to that in Celebration. But I thought, to me, one of the most stark contrasts between what Madonna does and what Janet does, because they're both entertaining. I mean, I walked out of Janet's show last night and was like, I loved it. It's amazing. But the there's the, I felt like it was sort of like Madonna's concert is so artful that there is like, there's intention and there's a story and there's meaning in certain things. And again, maybe not every number, you know, like Madonna singing holiday or uh, actually that's a bad example because there was a story behind holiday. Maybe like, I don't know. I, I can't, but you know what I mean? Like Janet's just, it was a bit more surface. Mm -hmm. It was about fun and just singing the song and, 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 and as Janet has been doing for, I think the last 10 years, it was just a lot of melody, uh, medleys. Like mm. she'd do maybe a minute of a song and then we'd move on. Now, was the audience having a blast? Absolutely. What did, did you hear crowds cheering every time she would sing a minute of a song and then all of a sudden the next song would start? Hell yes, you would. Uh, were, were, were people screaming out the lyrics? Yes, indeed. And was I? Yes, I was. I was jumping up and down and it, it was a fantastic time, but it was just interesting to me how like the concert ticket prices were <laughs> not Madonna prices. Like no. I, pay, I paid, I think I paid $300 for my floor seat to go see Janet Jackson. And I thought that was cheap. <laughs> well, yeah. And it recently it was in this like Ticketmaster does these every once in a while, like buy these $25 today. Oh, you know, only and Janet's was on there. And, yeah. and I considered like, Oh, maybe I should go. I just didn't, I didn't just, Pull the trigger she's on going that. to Austin. Yeah. I think yeah. she's She'll going be there. To, yeah. Liberty, that's what I was waiting on. So Janet was here Saturday, and we were waiting until day of, thinking that they were going to be the and the tickets never, even though there were like 300 available seats at regular price and about 300 resale tickets at the beginning of Saturday. The resale tickets, people started dropping the prices and they started disappearing. But the regular seats never went to that discount. Interesting. There's another artist that I was going to go see. Same situation. I thought, oh, it was hard. I thought, oh, for sure, day of, they'll drop it to, you know, 50, you know, whatever. The these the most expensive seats or, or whatever, they'll drop them, you know, by 50%. The only artist that I've seen so far like this year do that has been Madonna that that's happened. So, um, at Stevie, I also didn't have, a, Oh, right. You saw Stevie Nicks. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I didn't, end, I didn't end up seeing heart for that reason. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't want to spend that much money right now. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, and, and that was one thing that I decided I checked because once the show was like full blown going, I turned around cause I was like, let me see how many people are actually in this auditorium because there were hundreds mm -hmm. of available tickets available for Janet mere days before the show. And I was like, how are they going to fill these? All of them were filled. I, I could, I mean, yeah. there, there were a couple sections once the stage started, like 
that m- maybe during Madonna show they would have like opened up and made them available. Those were not for Janet last night in the same. Was venue. it an indoor venue or an outdoor? Oh, thankfully indoor. Jesus. Oh, see, I, ours was outdoor, and I think that's part maybe why they didn't drop. It also was ninety nine degrees at yeah. the start time of the show, so partly I'm glad we didn't go. Mm-hmm. But back to what you were saying, I think the difference is Janet's concert is entertainment, and Madonna's is engagement Mm -hmm. if we're being honest like it's very entertaining but it's also engaging in a way that you have to as an audience member and a fan both separately and together you have to engage with it but in a way that is more complicated and not as easy as a janet fan a janet show which is just like boom boom you know, and yeah, Madonna, yeah. like, it's not that same energy, so... Yeah, well, and, and then, that's... you know, I mean, look, look at, I mean, Janet, you know, she's still trotting out some of that same old choreography from, you know, like, she still does the If choreography, and she's I'm at like, a... doing Rhythm Nation and Miss You Much, and, like, it's the same choreography, so it's not just, like, the same song, it's, like, the same everything, which, again, it works for her, it's her brand, um, but she is definitely a much more, like, audience friendly act over Madonna, you know, like she started on time nine. I think it was like nine Oh five. Janet came on, you know, like Nelly warmed up the crowd, which also, by the way, I thought I knew Nelly. I do not like there were <laughs> people were, I mean, I was, I, the only thing I was just waiting for him to take a shirt off. I was like, are, are we at least get like, at least when I was like hot in here, he, I was like, Oh, he's going to take it off. No, no. Um, they, I mean, he was fun. He, he performed for maybe a half an hour. The audience was into it. Like, into it. I'm like, they know every single word for every single song. I was like, I don't know any of these. Like, how to, and well, the thing that cracked me up the most, I had to laugh. So he has like four backup dancers, these women. So there's like two sofas that they have on stage. And the girls at the beginning, it's like, it's supposed to be like the hot in here club or so. I forget what it's a club sleazy or dirty. I think it's club dirty or something. What I forget what they call it. But so the girls come out, like they're wearing their jackets, like they're coming to work and they have bags with them. And so they like plop all their stuff on the sofas and they go back and forth, like doing quick changes from the stuff on the sofas. It was very, very funny. I was like, are they just changing on the sofas? <laughs> wow. That's what we call low budget. Okay. I, I mean, it was, I it was, it was, they were going for a vibe. But... Yeah. But it wait, was... did he do his song that he did with Kelly Rowland? No. Dilemma. No, oh, really? no, no. That's the no, only song a, by it was all that like, one and the one he did with Christina Aguilera. What was that one called? I like that song. No, none of there was they no, had a song. There was no like divas playing while he it was all like just <sighs> straight up well, Nelly. Um but oh so but so Nelly goes away at like 845. They ready the stage, and literally like nine oh five, Janet comes out. The air conditioning was on, no one was passing wow. out from the heat. I actually for a moment I was like Oh, should I have brought a jacket? <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not. I was like, prepared to sweat in Janet, and I was like, Oh, I actually can feel. It. And so I was talking to the couple next to me, and because they had never seen Janet, nor had they never seen Madonna, and I was like, Wow, oh, hold up, hold up. I'm like, Y'all didn't go and see Celebration Tour? No, should we have? Uh, yeah. And I'm like, well, now it's too late. Like you missed your chance. Like you should have gone. It was the tour for you. Well, I, I, was, I was rebuking them. I'm like, shame on you. Um, but, uh, yeah. also I'd like to point out that he probably didn't take his shirt off cause Nelly is also turning 50 this year. And when you turn 50, you just don't want to take your shirt off in public anymore. Thank oh, you. You're welcome Benjamin, that does that mean we're, we're no longer going to see bathtub titty photos from you? Oh, probably not kids. <gasps> oh. It's Wait that era is oh. over. If, if we had special effects during the live episodes, we'd be playing a sad organ music right now. And Liberty would yeah. be wearing a veil. Yeah. Oh, Father Lord in heaven. Um, but wait a minute. Wait, how old is? Do you guys know how old is Nick Lachey, the host of Perfect Match? And he's like a couple years younger than. Okay. Wait. No. Wait. Because he's from Cincinnati, and he went to high school with Carmen Electra, who is also my age. Oh my God! Where have we gone? Hold up! Hold up! This is not. Oh, happening. Nick is a, is a few months older than me. He's about to turn fifty-one. And he ju- he took his shirt off on Perfect Match. 
So Okay, it's called Ozempic Liberty, which <laughs> I'm not going to be on. No offense to anybody who is. Y'all do what you want, but I ain't doing it. You don't need it. Yeah, you oh. don't need so it. You're... Listen, you're sexy. <laughs> you're the moment. You're hot. Mm-mm. Own it. At 50, at, look, if if Madonna can do what Madonna can do, oh, we want to see body your body. At 50 was stupid. Yeah. Sticky and sweet Madonna body is like athletic yes. as F. Oh my yeah. God. It I, always I, annoyed me when that was the era when like Rios, <laughs> Hilton, and all those people would like put those pictures of her. You know who I'm talking about. I refuse yeah, yeah. to speak yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like had, you know, all the blogs, then they would do like the worst paparazzi photos where like her arms would be all like bleh, and her those face. Those were also photoshopped. They photoshopped those. Oh, those, totally. those are photoshopped. I mean, it's but, totally like, then photoshopped. You watch, the, you watch the concert film and you're like, oh, damn, mm-hmm. I want those thighs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the uh, last thing on Janet. 58 years old, singing oh, and dancing. I can still singing do and dancing that. for two hours. And I was like, God bless her. Like, yeah. God bless these pop stars who, these artists who are, like, over the age of 50. I mean, just me standing and watching the show, I was like, I got home. I'm like, ooh, all right. Took me a little yeah, bit to wind down. Barking, just like yes. mine were. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank yeah. God I had some new shoes. I don't, you know. Not to mention, like, the mental stress that you're under while you're performing and all of the thinking you have yes. to do. And, I mean, yes, you're. A lot of it is body sort of memory, right? Physical memory. But at the same time, like, they have to think about all of those people that work for them and all of the functions of the stage. And a couple of the photos that you shared, um, I'm just going to reference, but they there were some little referential, like, things, right? This circle. She had there. a circle that ho- hovered above, like, very, nothing really matters. And, mm-hmm. yeah, there was, um, there, there was a moment when the show opens, there was this very, like, sort of, like, pirouetted curtain that came down. It was very sooner or later blonde ambition moment, you know, where Madonna's on the piano and it's like the curtain comes down. Like there was some, some, I mean, I'm sure Janet's not intentionally nodding to those Madonna. No, not necessarily. Who's, who's tour did they all borrow that ring of light? Was that post Malone that did that? Or was it Harry Styles that had the big ring of lights that moved around the stage? I think it was post Malone. I mean, she I, uh, saw both of those. I think yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not sure about Harry. I don't know if she was at a well that I know of at a Harry Styles show, but for sure she was at Post Malone. She saw a whole bunch of stuff when she was working on Celebration Tour. Still, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll but um, Celebration Tour. I'll celebrate. Well, I'll, I, I think I don't think we talked about this last time because I don't know if they were out, but the those things that uh, got released, the the footage where you can hear her inner ear. Of the people like oh, talking to like yeah, and yeah. two three four crazy crazy four and then Madonna sings you know and he's like oh and, I haven't heard that oh it was so, all over Twitter all over all over the internet oh. and they're they're wonderful I mean she's been doing it for years so people were were sort of commenting about how like I can't believe that she has somebody chewing her with for lyrics that's so dumb because all of that was for Taylor that was all out on TikTok for. Like in yeah. January or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So that's why I'm surprised. And Liberty, it, it wasn't exactly on... like what you're saying, where it's like they are the circus ringleader. So they, not only are they having to do dance steps, interact with the dancers, make sure that they're going to the right place on the stage so that the, the, the platform doesn't crush them or whatnot. But it's like and then they have to sing. And I'm like, you know what? If I was on stage and there was that much going on, people in the audience, lights in my face, blah, blah, blah. I would want a cue just to help me keep on track. Like, it's fine. Right. We do show notes so that we, we can keep, you know, we have a little outline so, to sort of keep us on track about what we want to talk about when we're on a podcast. If we're doing a two hour show, yeah, I want somebody in my ear to remind me it's burning up next, you know? Yes. Right. Everybody in the audience just know that we do have cues that Stefan plans and that, that I miss. <laughs> Certain people are supposed to sing, and then other people are supposed to make some country <laughs> comment when he makes those cues. And sometimes we just ignore them or forget them because we're old. Yeah. You're coming, welcome. Coming yeah. soon, too. <laughs> if there's ever an uncomfortable silence, it's because they're ad- purposefully not doing a cue that I've asked them yeah. to do. So, uh, yeah, okay, we should own that sometimes we're just like... No. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so we're going to do this little gig and this little gag and blah, blah, blah. And Liberty and Better are like, uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh. And then we're, I'm like, yeah, and now sure. we're going live. And I'm like, and cue. 
And then they're mm-hmm. like, if you just see them sitting there giving a sour push face, that's what they're doing. They're 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 silently protesting. We're not sour joke. pussing. You be quiet. Uh, listen, I will never not do what Stefan tells me to do. <laughs> if Stefan says jump, I say how high Aww. immediately. Are the stakes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Hey, then Liberty. I... I mean, you know that did get us into the the. the, the <laughs> The sound, the sound factory pit at, at celebrations. Uh, I told her, I'm like, this is what you're gonna have to do tonight, and she did it. And then look what happened. No, no I, I'm telling you, Stefan has not led me astray. So I just, it's yes, about sir. to go astray. Yes, you're sir. In, you're, you're, your inhibition's gone away. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are too good tonight. I'm actually on. I think my brain cells have been fried with all this heat. But oh, well. Speaking of Madonna, because. Why? You know, that's why we're here. Oh yeah, uh, this right. is a <laughs> Madonna podcast. Come on, Madonna. Uh, cue the cue, kids. Yeah, cue the here comes the cue. You ready? Yeah. Now you're learning our trades. This is our little secret. Uh, June is Pride Month, and well, you know what that means. Madonna will be posting photos or making an appearance of some kind. Wearing a captain's hat. I actually tonight I'm wearing my <laughs> my Madonna World Pride uh, T-shirt from New York, where she's wearing her her because uh, you're the one I crave. Little captain's her crave hat. hat. Yeah, and um, other than her appearance in captain's hats, which I thought is so funny. Every time she posts a picture of her wearing a captain's hat, I realize how much she loves wearing a captain's hat. Like, and if you just type in Google, like Madonna captain's hat. There's like Captain Jazz, like all, all over her. All the way back to the first era. Yeah, it's great. Like she's been wearing them. Like if people are like, I mean, because I do, sometimes I'll call her out. Like I'll message the two of these and I'll be like, oh, here she is wearing this captain's hat again. I and love them. It's just, it's funny that she's like, it, it's been such a staple of hers throughout her entire career. Um, but uh, I, yeah, the because big news. She I, navigates, you know, she's like, though yeah. she's, you know, Starboard port. She is the <laughs> North Star. Ahoy! Captain well, of the gaze. Also, this needs to be a story she tells in the memoir that she writes, since Mary right. Gabriel and the other books have never revealed what is the affinity for this hat that it has made it's remained an accessory all along. Like, is there some childhood connection? Has it was it the same hat for many years, and now she has like fifty of them? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, the one in the new Instagram photos is not the one from those right. Virgin era ones that you were doing side by side. But there's that's one of those things. It's like a teen cue as an artist. I want to know the story behind that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So before we talk about Ladyland. Let's talk about the Instagram photos. So, of course, as we know, Queen of Tees loves to tease things. Mm, Madonna's got a secret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's, like, posting all these, like, beautifully quaffed photos. I think there was the first set was her with, like, sort of, like, the short sort of bobbed look uh, where she's staring in the mirror. She loves to look in her bathroom mirror. And she looked gorgeous. And then the second set of photos her hair was much longer and down. And she had that smoky eye, which I was like, yes, Madonna, please. I'm like, just give me Madonna and a smoky eye. I was like, this is bedtime story. This is goth Donna. This mm-hmm. is early, early Madonna 80s look. Like it's, I love it. And she looked beautiful and gorgeous. Oh my gosh. And and then we got the 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 third set of Instagram photos, which was her wearing the captain's hat and sort of her croc. I, don't, I can't, can you do that with your lip? The, I can't even, yeah, you can do it. I can't do it. Can you do it, Ben? Where you like, sort of like, oh, you can do it too. Liberty, are you able it's to? The, I call it the justify my love snarl. Yes. It's a, yeah. Oh, I, I wish I could. I, I don't have much lip to do it. So, uh, all right. So question, you, are you, Liberty, you're able to do that with your lip. It's sort of like an Elvis, the Elvis thing. And Ben, you can do it. Are you both able to, I'm trying to, I'm going to test genetics here. Are you both able to roll your tongue? Yes. Okay. So I wonder if the same gene that allows you, you must be popular in the boys room, Ben. Uh, so I, I wonder. Sure was. <laughs> you tie I, those cherry stems in a knot with the. Can you do that? 10 seconds. I couldn't I do that. I can't. I practice. I can't. I, can, uh, <laughs> yes, I, I can never. tie two balls together that way. But... Oh, all right. Calm down. <laughs> uh, so, but 
now question are you able to do that with your lips and you're able to do that with your tongue are you able to crock an eyebrow well liberty can ben and ben can okay so i oh, just i can I, do the other one too oh i i i could sort of do it i can't do it as well <laughs> anyway <laughs> Wow, we please don't hit, freeze. Please don't have, freeze. This is what this is what happens right. when we this is are, listen, this is how you know I don't do Botox. Botox, right. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Sorry. speaking of the hats, this is a total tangent, but somebody just brought it up in the chat, so we have to acknowledge it. Yes, please. It's the fact that she's had the same bathroom for a bazillion years. And then so and then that started making me think the other day, I was like, gosh, she really likes to do stuff in her bathroom. And literally yesterday, somebody posted footage on Twitter. From, was it the L.A. premiere of Truth or Dare? Which one had the Dolce & Gabbana rainbowy corset with the short black hair? That was L.A., right? Yes. And then goth, full goth, on straight goth, goth Donna. Goth was Donna New was in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So glamour goth Donna was L.A. She literally was talking about in the interview with Kurt Loder with Nikki and Donna. Yes, I am a had, tramp. No, Yeah, but... Later in the interview, they were talking about how they had just come from a private party in Madonna's bathroom <laughs> in 1991. Hey, th- she knows that there's no microphones or, or cameras, you know, like she's got that all. I guess. It's I mean, like, it's, good, yeah, most good, private. Good, good lighting, you know. Plus, it come on. Good lighting. You know, how many times have you been in an apartment party or a house party and you're either in the kitchen or the bathroom? I okay. never. I'm At always in the parties, kitchen of the bathroom. You go to the bathroom to make out with somebody, like, or the hallway. You know, like I thought I'm it was never, just for like the drugs. I'm, I'm never in the like the living room. You know, it's oh, always like kitchen, bathroom, hallway in front of the bathroom. I feel like the balcony has become because the that's where the best bathroom. conversations happen. Like all the like cool people are. You know, it's it's just I don't know. I was I love a good bathroom selfie. I mean, I don't take them because my bathroom is not as luxurious as Madonna's, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, well, I she guess that hotel. A, consist, a consistent decor. I mean, it's pretty much yeah. been the same bathroom for a lo- for a while. Well, she's now. had that compound. Well, Since she's, so she's Instagram's had, debut. So she's had her her west her uh, Upper West Side uh, apartment for decades, like since like the nineties, and she's had her Upper East Side townhouse now for a, a good. Uh, 15 years maybe i think yeah, yeah. at least at so least, it's been it's yeah. been a while yeah, yeah yeah so exactly you know i mean she's not selling a, either of those anytime soon oh um, my god that's retirement money yeah Shush. that i mean that house the she, i mean there's no she's not selling it's those two it's just not she's not doing it you know and then she's got the hamptons house so i mean I, i'm sure we've seen sort of we've probably had stuff from the hamptons bathroom as well but um I so, wonder if all the bathrooms she's had them designed to look exactly the same in each house. Again, if her team would hire us, these are the hard hitting news stories we would be doing for everyone. Like, I mean, people int- want to in- know. In- intimate That's looks the lady at, land to me. Yeah. Intimate looks at Madonna's bidet. Like, these are the things we want to know. You know? Yeah. How hard does it spray? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I meant there. Yes. So... After these teased posts, um, we got the confirmation earlier today of the much rumored and I think poorly well-known secret that Madonna will be making an appearance at Ladyland on June 29th in Brooklyn under the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, She'll be joining her friends Bob the Drag Queen, Arca, Tokisha, Julia Fox, and a DJ who I believe is her daughter, i.e. Queen Esther. Mm -hmm. Um, as of right now, the only confirmed appearance that we know of for her participation will be as a Vogue ballroom judge, which I believe, according to the Ladyland schedule, is happening at midnight. So if you're uh, on Madonna, if you're on Madonna time, be prepared for 1 a.m. Uh, if you're lucky. Um, but who knows? Do we think that, and of course, as Stefan's brain always does. Do we think we'll get Madonna a performance? No. I, and I don't. Said no. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I, I, I'm saying no as well. But, of course, there's that little. Oh, yeah. Little, there's that we, little. Would have got, we would have gotten a story footage of her knee brace at this point if it was mm-hmm. happening. Like, <laughs> yeah. No. There would Maybe have been we'll a picture of banged up shoes or a <laughs> knee brace 
or a bruised elbow because she likes to show her war injuries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, so I mean, again, here's here's my like I'm praying. I'm like, oh, Madonna's gonna make an appearance at Pride tonight's Thursday night at midnight. She's gonna drop a new single and a new video, which will match the the photo shoots that she's that she's already put out, and we'll have this new song to dance to at Pride, and then she'll perform it live with Bob. Liberty, Jackson, he's been in that. Julia Fox. We're talking about. <laughs> I was going to say, did you get another Austin gummy? Um, I mean, I told like, that's actually how it should go. I mean, Correct. let's speak Correct. Frank. Like, that's how it should go. And we're... The, the Madonna psychic track drops at, at, at midnight tonight. We get a yeah. video with her with smoky eyes and beautiful hair and that gorgeous And outfit. Esther plays it Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. And it wouldn't even be, I mean, of course, in, in our mind, I'm thinking, you know, like, well, come on, like, what's she been doing since May 4th? She's had plenty of time to, like, you know, tighten all those screws. And then, but I, I don't know. I mean, we did get a surprise. Where was that Um, in 21 where she was, you know, the blue hair and she's in the middle? Oh, of- that was that Ricardo No Fear art installment that they did in Times Square. And yes, and again, she With had all those, won- all those wonderful. She did. Right? Yes, she performed at the uh, standard, uh, the rooftop of the standard, the Boom Boom Room and no new song. But when I, of course, when I saw Ricardo's installation, I was like, Ricardo, where's the new song? You, you, you're giving us these three looks, these three characters, and and no music. Like what? What the hell? You know? Yeah, but, I'm. I'm just. I would love that, Stefan. I in your dreams to. No, I, but I, I am. I'm. I'm low expectations. I just believe she's just going to show up, sit in a chair, hold up a number, chop or ten. She's or, there to hang out with her pals and support Esther. That's yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And show some love for the gays, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good that she's still putting on an appara. Uh, uh, you know, she's going to put on an appearance. And uh, I personally hope she's about. wearing the captain's hat. I do. <laughs> yes. So do I. I. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, what look is she going to do? Is she going to look like Madonna like this, like captain's hat Madonna with blonde hair? Or is she going to go like completely off Kill turn like show up like be wigged Madonna with like a new wig, a new look or something because she's been sort of doing that a lot lately, you know, in her pride appearances. So it'll and she's I showing loved, up with Julia Fox. So I loved the Veronica Lake sort of wavy long like with the side part. God, that was mm. incredible. I mean, already when she had her roots done, and we were all like whiplash, like oh. Eh? Oh, well, I, I'm telling you. So the fact that she did her roots, I, I was like, she's doing something, something. Yeah. I'm like, she's not just otherwise. Why would she do them? You know, like there's if she's not doing her hair, she's doing her hair for something. I don't know what I don't know. Is it like, is it just these little Instagram photos? I'm like, I like to believe that there's more, although I've been saying she's been doing more for years now, now and we haven't gotten anything. And I still, I'm like, uh, Madonna, I, if you're doing this to just to, you know, drag my hopes through the mud, fine. But I'm like, please release new music sometime before, well, you know, I mean, she's going to outlive also, me, I'm sure. But it's also the Instagramification of of that engagement, right? Like it yeah. used to be the photo shoots with in W or they were in Vanity Fair and nobody does that anymore. And those publications, even though they should, because fans would go and buy it all up, like they're not interested in that either. If you're not like some TikTok thing. So what's, what's, you know, what's the avenue for that creative expression? Cause she still likes that relationship with the camera. And yeah. And doing that sort of thing. I mean, that first batch of pictures with the pinned up hair was mm-hmm. just, you were like, oh, wow, that's like 1994, yeah. but in 2024, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you could almost see that character coming forward and like being like, oh, hey, I'm still here, right? Mm-hmm. Like that persona. From the secret yeah. video, you know, or like, yeah, the, or, yeah. or the, or the Madonna from Bettina Rhymes photo shoot that she used yeah. in the human nature single, like the, that, or those Ellen Van Unworth photos yes. that you referenced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's as soon as I saw that, I was like, yes, Madonna. Yes, this is, and it's, it's still beautiful. there. That's what I liked about it. That spark was still there. Mm-hmm. 
I'd love to. Yeah. And I kind of like, uh, so I had, I was in New York recently and I always like to stop by Casa magazines if I can, just because it's like such an amazing magazine uh, outlet in New York city. And you're just like surrounded by magazines from all over the world. And it's fantastic. And I, they had the re-edition magazine that Madonna's uh, recent spread was in, the one that she did with that, um, the Brazilian, had that hot Brazilian man, and there was the photos oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that are uh, that Ricardo had taken. So they had the magazine with which had that spread in it, but they didn't have the one with Madonna on the cover because all of the Madonna fans had descended upon Casa Magazine and already bought it up. But I was paging through it nonetheless, and. I was like, oh, my God. I, I'm like, I don't even need this magazine, but it's so fun to, see, like, see her in print, not on a phone. Like, yeah. it was gorgeous. Like, it was just... And she, and what I thought was so fascinating was, like, she looked so much more real in the magazine. Like, you could see, like... I mean, it was a good Photoshop job, but, like, she looked palpable and real. Mm. And it just, like, the clarity of it was just phenomenal and i'm like this is what i love about magazines you know yeah Yeah, what we miss so much we do and you know the first thing i did when you were like new photos in the group text i went and opened instagram on a computer with a giant screen because i'm like this stupid thing is not enough like Mm. no it's true (laughs) it's the same thing so like as a photographer uh if you don't if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know by now, I, I have my, well, another one of my side hustles is photography. I I'm quite proud of my work. I've been published a couple times internationally. I've taken some photos of minor celebrities here or there. Uh, and my work, I happen to like my work. It's, I think it's quite good. Um, if you like hot men, you should mm-hmm. hop on over and give my, give my, uh, Instagram uh, a follow. It's, it's quite good. And, um, but I'm so used to seeing it my work on a little phone that when I can see it in, and I've been published a couple of times in a, in a couple of magazines to see it in print. I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, wow, this looks amazing. Or like if I see it on a big screen, it's, it's just so fascinating. Like I, I would love, uh, there's that Calvin Klein billboard uh, along East Houston street in New York city that I love to pass by every time I'm in town because it's just so big and massive. And I just love seeing photography that way. Like it's, it's so f- fun to see because I think we're so trained now to see it on tiny little, it just doesn't do it justice when you see it on a phone, you know, like I, I miss that desperately about magazines. And, um, that's why I love going to like, a. a like a photography gallery and scene work. Like that's why I'm so jealous that we didn't get the sex book. Uh, like they didn't tour those photos around. Like they didn't come I, to where we, oh, that yeah. was a, that was a missed big money opportunity. Cause like I, I would I have would, gone to I see would, them, like just to have like, to be able to see that like big, like outside of the sex book, it would have been so amazing. Oh, I would drop 500 to go into that. Like really? I, I would not even, Oh, I wouldn't even blink. <laughs> Wow. Like, uh, well, see, they could have like so they could have bundled it. You know, again, I'm all about bundles because we know that they got to make their money by merch. So you get like a sex T-shirt, you know, maybe you get like a lithograph and your entrance ticket, you know, so like yeah. you can go and they sh- you see all the prints, different prints. And then and then if you want to uh, in the gift shop on the way out, you can buy one of those newly redone sex books for one thousand dollars, you know, whatever. But like, yeah. And people will because they just yeah. buy, buy, yeah. buy. Oh. Yeah, but even going... that book, yeah, seeing it online, it's just not the same. No, it's not. No. It's not the same. Going back, I was thinking a little bit about her pictures and how, you know, we instantly were thinking or we were triggered to think about 93 or 94 bedtime stories look and I wonder if it's intentional on her behalf or if she likes that that's our instant, you know, thought process because, Mm -hmm. you know, given that she's always been such a a reinvent and, and, you know, change who I am and and not necessarily look back. I I wonder about that if, if, well, but how much of her career are we now like seeing come back? Like, well, she's always I, done it, which I is why I always thought believe that wasn't one hundred percent true. Like, you know what I, I mean? I cannot believe how much fashion from the nineties 
are back. Like oh, yeah. I, somebody, I forget where I was. And I was like, why are they wearing this? And my sister turned to me and she was like, she's like the, the that fashion's back i'm like are you kidding me like the Stephen, kids- you clearly have not been in a gap lately have you <laughs> no it literally looks like the clothes that were on sale at the gap 30 years ago when we yeah. would have been in college they just right. drug out their old stock <laughs> yeah they the really that, did the dead stock that they didn't sell back in 1993 they're just whipping it back out and trying to it's crazy i and then i'm like Wish I could fit in mine. I still have it. Totally. I know that's exactly what I, I thought. I was like, into it. Um, I, I was like, well, even if I had held on to some of those clothes from the nineties, I'm like, I wouldn't well, actually that's not true. Because back in the nineties, I was all I was a pencil thin, I was super skinny and I used to wear everything super oversized. So like maybe now like the extra large that I was swimming in back in the early nineties, I'd actually be able to fit in today. So But knows? that was the look. It, I mean, that's the style yeah. is to have it all the students at uh, at school. Well, and that's what it is now. Clothes. It's all these like bell huge bell pants and Mm -hmm. like oversized clunky shoes and like shirts that are hanging off of you. And um, I'm getting random texts from a lot of people saying we are doomed. So I assume the, the debate is not going well. I'm getting the same texts. Yeah. So Uh, I'm just, I I have not been looking at my, I'm almost afraid to know. I've kind of so enjoyed the fact that we've been in this bubble that I forgot that the debates were happening and all, of a sudden my phone starts blowing up. So I'm like, something's happening. And I almost don't want to leave our Madonna bubble to find out what it is. <laughs> I know it's terrifying. Like, I, like how can it be this bad in the world? I don't understand. <laughs> and like, it is in the world. It's not just here. Exactly. It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Like, I just don't, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want I just want to, I live wish music happy. could still bring the people together, but I, I know. just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God. well, I'm just going to close my eyes for a moment and go back to 1994. I'm, mm. I'm walking down the street with Madonna wearing a faux fur coat and a smoky eye and a nose ring mm. and some curly hair and a, uh, a blonde bob. And uh, mm. finally, I'm yeah, even happy. nose rings are making a comeback in, in my happy place. Uh, OK, uh, that's that's all right. We're, I'm going to go and do deep breaths. Meanwhile, I'm getting more texts of people saying I have no words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Well, hopefully, stop, hopefully stop. they're not talking about this, right? They're not watching us, right? No, they are no. not. Like, okay. We Sadly. only currently have 34 people watching this. Oh, well, <laughs> bless you for watching us. I thank you for joining us. Thank oh, you for we've being got with people us. watching from Hong Kong and Toronto and several places. Oh, lovely. So. Uh, are there any we questions? Can we can we do there, anyone a favor while we're <laughs> there were, while we're here? There were no questions. We did somebody named Nico is actually going to be at Ladyland. Oh cool. Well and tag is looking us forward to share it. some photos of Madonna. Tell yeah. her we said I hi. Said take lots of photos. Yeah, so. I um I honestly her team would have to pay me to show up for that because I'm at tw- midnight at Saturday under the Brooklyn Bridge. No 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 yeah I I, I no. cannot um, there is no hope at all in this debate. Okay, I'm, not, I'm turning my phone over. I can't look at these texts. Don't look, anymore. don't look. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> I'm like, you stop texting me. Do I don't it. know. I'm in a really bad text loop right now. <laughs> yeah, don't do uh, it. Don't do it. Isn't well, every... it like pack their bedtime? Like, that's the other part of it. Like, just, you know, this should have been at 440. <laughs> it's on for another half an hour. They oh, took an hour and a half. I know. Gosh. God. Um, well, everybody, that's our show for today. Coming up in July, just remember, we have our Madonna Summer Movie Series returning. We are doing A Vita, uh, which is a, uh, what I'm titling a must-watch episode. Yes. I feel like that's going to be an extra long one. Mm-hmm. Well, because we're not only going to hit the movie, but we're, we're also going to soundtrack. talk about the soundtrack because they are in- intertwined. You can't talk about Madonna's Evita movie without talking about the music as well, because it's... Okay, but are we going to be able to talk about all of it without talking about Patti LuPone? No, I think I think people want to hear a little bit about Patti LuPone. Okay, fine. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Just how, we'll talk about how bitter she was. Okay, that soothes me. <laughs> so this uh, might be a two-parter is what you're saying maybe yeah maybe 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 we'll break it up i mean i guess we could we could we do could. we could the movie do and the start with the music yeah. and then do the movie mm-hmm. yeah. it all depends on if i hit my cues well 
<laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> stick around for the outtakes, ladies and gentlemen. And they know. <laughs> I promise to be rainbow high. Oh, eyes <laughs> oh is that now. the new Austin gummy? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love that strain of gummies. Yeah. I'll have a rainbow high, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's high flying a door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, remember, everybody, you can find um, us on Instagram, X and Threads at MLVC Podcast. Yes, that's right. I've decided to finally stop saying Twitter, where I'm on board with the X now. Thanks, Elon, for stupiding it up. But For so uh, much. Yeah, you can donate to the podcast on Venmo at MLVC Podcast or click that like button on YouTube and donate via Super Thanks. Uh, If you have not yet already subscribed to our YouTube channel, tick that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Like I said, Madonna Summer Movie Series returning next month with Evita and who knows what other surprises are coming down the way. I certainly don't because I haven't thought ahead that far. We're just winging it, ladies and gentlemen and everybody else. Just like waiting. Oh, actually, well, no, sorry. We will be doing a pride recap. Uh, I think a coworker of mine is actually going to Ladyland. So oh. maybe if they're still alive on Sunday night, we'll have them on the show. Uh, That'll so, be fun. Yeah. So look out for a post pride recap uh, just for fun. And uh, then, yeah, who knows what's going to happen in July? I mean, it's uh, or the rest of the summer for that matter. Mm-hmm. What are we doing after Avita? What's happening after Avita? Well, then it'll be August. The next best thing. Next best thing. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. Which is her birthday. No, that's... And, yeah, and her birthday episode, too. Yeah, our, our sixth annual... Oh, yeah. Uh, if anyone listening knows of anyone who has done a Madonna cover, or if you yourself have done a Madonna cover, drop us a note. Let us know. Otherwise, until next time, everybody... Get your captain's hat ready for Pride on Sunday. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Oh, happy Pride. Mm-hmm. Survive the apocalypse. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even want to look. I'm afraid. <laughs>